Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward and welcome to City Line. Later in the program, we're gonna meet two of the actors that will be on stage at the Opera House for Ain't Too Proud to Beg, The Life and Times of the Temptations. But first, breaking barriers. Here's a story about the first black woman marathon runner to finish in under three hours. Some of those older gentlemen would have me run with them. And that's how I started learning about training. And as I developed racing and making friends and then I start running with uh, some training partners who have been my friend for life but I always had some guys that would run with me on those distance days but other than it was almost like the blind leading the blind nobody exactly knew what they were doing you said we heard this or this magazine might said this at the time and you did what you thought was best so I just did a whole lot of distance not even a lot of speed for a long time just to be able to run you know those magic 20 miles you got to get the 20 miles in and, and this type of thing and we just did the best we could that way. So we took the plane up. And I remember first Boston, you, then they were finishing, what is that, the Prudential building, a big tall building. And after you, when you're running after a while, you see the building, think it's around the corner and you see the building, you think it's around the corner. And I remember my sister and my family here today, it wouldn't be surprised when I say this, but I actually started crying because I knew I was going to finish Boston. And I'll be crying knowing I'm going to finish Boston Marathon. Then I told myself, you can't cry and breathe at the same time. You have to breathe so you can finish the Boston Marathon. And that's my biggest recollection. I don't even know what I placed or whatever, but it wasn't too bad. I was happy. I would be there and run Boston. Happy indeed. Joining me now is Marilyn Bevan. She's the first black American woman to finish under three hours. And Adrienne Bitten, the first woman of color to serve on the Board of Governors in the 135-year history of the BAA, the Boston Athletic Association. And Bitten will be running her third Boston Marathon this year. Thank you both for joining us. Adrienne, talk about how you see your role on the Board of Governors. What's your goal as you serve uh, your term? Good morning. Um Basically, my primary role is is to have a voice for um, community members here here in the Boston area, and 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 also similar communities all across the country. Um, basically, part of the mission of the BAA is is to contribute to the health and well-being of of citizens and so uh, we're going to be doing you know a lot more of that uh, we're known for the boston marathon and all the other various run events but at the same time you know we want to be able to uplift the health and well-being of our general community and Marilyn, as we uh, hear you speak about uh, that in the documentary again you became the first black american woman to win a marathon and a few months later you placed fourth in the 1975 boston marathon becoming the first black woman to uh, finish in under three hours, quite an achievement, a personal achievement for sure, but explain why it was such a significant milestone. I didn't even know at the time, I didn't know to years later that I was the first black woman to break three hours. I just wanted to run, won my best times, try to get under three hours. Um, my best marathon time was Boston in 77. I didn't place that year, but I mean, that was a 249.56. So I was just happy to keep improving upon my times. And it was all surprised to me when Tony Reed of the Black Marathon Association let me know I was the first. I said, are you sure about that? He said, yes. I said, OK, because I knew their research was always on point. If they said it, it was so. And we have to give our hats off to Tony Reed, who was the uh uh, producer behind uh, the documentary clip that we just uh, saw called Breaking Barriers. Marilyn, you know, only 3% of U.S. runners are black, according to the Running USA 2020 National Runner Survey. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't. Uh, a lot of black Americans don't have the money or the place to run. I know that might sound strange, but when you're working hard, maybe working two jobs, you don't have a lot of energy left or depending on where you live, you might not be, have available the type of places to run where you can feel safe and get a good long run. And also to be in an area where you would have running communities that would help you run. So it's a little bit harder for us. Hmm. Adrian, um, Maryland has been running for decades, but it's a relatively yes. new sport for you. I think you just started mm -hmm. seven years ago. So what does running yeah. do for you and how were you inspired to start? 
Well, for me, running just helps me keep up with my general health and well-being. I also love the run community. I belong to the National Black Marathoners Association. I belong to Black Girls Run here in Boston. And, and basically, it just contributes to my overall health and fitness. It's kind of a reminder to move my body. So if I have a race as a goal, or basically that, that enables me to, um, to, to stay focused on my own health and well-being. You know, I always tell people, if you can get out and walk 15 minutes, you know, that can do a tremendous, tremendous benefit to your body. Mm. And uh, Adrian, uh, I've had a chance to watch your running career evolve over time. And running has taken you many places. Talk about uh, yes. where running has yes. taken you. Yes. Well, my goal is to complete the six majors. Um, those are Boston, New York, Chicago, Berlin, Tokyo, and London. Uh, I have two more to go. I still have London to do, which I'm hoping to complete this year, and then uh, Tokyo, and I will have uh, completed my Abbott Six. Um, mm -hmm. I set that goal primarily because I have not traveled abroad, and, and I knew that setting this goal would, would force me you know, to do that, and it has been a wonderful journey so far. I ran my first international race in, um, in September of last year. I ran the Berlin Marathon and it was truly an exciting event. And the other nice thing is that my nephew lives there now. So made it a little bit easier to get around and, and, and to kind of integrate in things. And, and I'm actually still studying German, so. And, and Adrian, how were you received uh, as you are, uh, as an African-American woman running around the world? And tail that into how has the BAA boosted outreach and diversity? Yeah. Well, in terms of, of reception of, of black runners in, in, in different parts of the world, I mean, um, belonging to all these different run groups, you know, you get to hear um, people's stories. And I do have to say that, you know, with running being, being an international sport, um, you will be surprised how welcome uh, you are, regardless of your, of your skin color, diversity, sexual orientation, or whatever it is that, you know, that you're welcome. And, and so it's a wonderful community and it's a wonderful way to, to um, see the world. That's great, that's great. Um, and this year the BAA is celebrating the year of the woman and so we're very fortunate to have two fabulous running women with us here today, Adrian and Marilyn. Thank you both for joining us. Now, next Saturday, celebrate and connect with the 2022 Black Marathoners Meetup event. All runners, family members, friends, and community members are welcome. It's at the Reggie Lewis Track and Athletic Center. Up next, Real Pirates. It's what's new in Salem, their unique society, how they created a nation of equals. And also ahead, Comics in Color. We check in with Rob Armstrong, who infuses humor and wit into his syndicated Jumpstart comic strip. That's all next on City Line.